Welcome back to the Plunge with Purpose podcast, where we talk about all things free diving in the ocean and the springs. So today's episode is going to be a bit of a free dive refresher. And I'm going to preface this with saying I am not a certified instructor. I have trained with several different instructors. And every time I can, I do a course or I have some day training or whatever I do, I always pick up some really helpful tidbits of information and every instructor has their own unique style. And I feel really blessed to have, uh, picked up, uh, so many tips. And I have like this laundry list of items that I always try to remember during my dives. And a lot of the time halfway through a dive or after a dive, I'll remember and be like, ah, oh, crap, why wasn't I doing that? So I just wanted to share my knowledge (laughs) on today's episode and hope that it can help uh, someone out there that may be struggling with something or maybe just needs a gentle reminder to to do these things again. Um, And I'm going to do it in like a body scan fashion. So starting with, you know, everything we need to be thinking about with our head and our face and then working our way down the body, shoulders, core, uh, legs, all the things. Um, So. I feel that, uh, this can be some really useful stuff, uh, for you guys, no matter where you are in your journey, uh, you know, whether you're thinking about getting started with free diving or whether you're just like a a super snorkeler, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, I hope that this can help you out. So starting, let's start with the top of the head, right? Let's think up here, what we need to be doing. And the first thing I always like to tell myself is my actual head position. Uh, where is my chin falling, right? Where is my head at? So something to always remember, um, is to pretend that there's like a ball underneath your chin and you're trying to hold that in place. So your chin needs to be tucked. And if you were to be, you know, as you're listening to this, whether you're driving, whatever you're doing, you know, sit up straight and tuck your chin and you'll feel in the back of your neck, you should feel your spine straighten out. Um, you do want to feel that lengthening. You want to feel that straightening. You want everything to be in line. Um, this helps with relaxation. It helps with streamlining and it helps with equalizing, um, which can be a, a sticky, sticky subject. So tucking a chin is always really great. And I know that, you know, if you're diving in a spring or if you're on like a shallower reef, you want to see, you know, as if you're diving what's below you, uh, you want to see if you're going to hit your head on something. So you know, a very gentle check, you know, looking beneath you and then putting your chin right back slowly, you know, that's fine. But overall, you definitely want to have your, your chin tucked and try to keep that little imaginary orange or tennis ball, whatever you have in place. Um, so that's tip number one. The next thing we want to focus on is, um, what we're doing with our face. And it sounds so strange, but, um, your face, if you're scrunched and tense and, Um, that will also impact your equalization. So, uh, I remember like doing yoga and my yoga instructor would be like, okay, relax your face. And I would be like, what the hell do you mean? Relax my face. My face is relaxed. Um, but it actually feels different. You can feel the muscles, you know, if you're, if you furrow your brow as you're listening and then kind of release it, you'll feel the, the skin and the muscles around the corners of your eyes and your eyebrows. It kind of just drops and, and, uh, shifts. And that's what we want to feel in the water. We want our whole face to be relaxed. Um, again, it's really going to help with equalization. Uh, it also helps with your mask fitting a little bit better. Uh, if you ever have like a little bit of a leaky mask or you feel that something's just not fitting you quite right. Um, but when you first bought it, it fit fine. Maybe it's because you're not relaxing your face. So give that a shot the next time that you dive. Uh, okay. The next thing is what are we doing with our nose? So I am not a hands-free equalizer. I absolutely need my hand and I tend to keep it on my nose for my entire dive. So when I'm equalizing uh, and I'm going to put my hand over my nose here, what are you doing to your nostrils, right? Are you like really grabbing them super hard, you know, or are you just gently uh, restricting airflow? And something that we need to be conscious of is, is how aggressive we're being with our nose, So I've seen people go to dive and they're like, ah, ah," like really squeezing their nose as hard as they can. And, um, by doing that, you're going to be tensing up more than just that area. You're tensing up your face, which will negatively impact your equalizing. So be gentle to your nostrils, you guys. And, you know, we need to think about this when we're getting our mask. So 
when you're looking for masks, I absolutely always do this in person. I would avoid buying them online unless you've already tried it on because you want to put it on and see how difficult is it to get a good handle on your nose without having to like really grab. Um, so I like to look for masks that have that really thin, very flexible rubber around the nose, not something that's really rigid uh, or else you're going to struggle and then you're going to fight to get a good grip and probably pinch too hard. So for all the reasons, get, you know, a softer mask and make sure you can pinch and don't pinch all crazy. All you have to do is just restrict that airflow that comes out. Doesn't take much. Okay. Very good. So working our way down the face, uh, let's talk about the jaw. What's your jaw doing? So when I get done with a dive, if it's been a little bit cold, or if I was like in my head thinking about I don't, who knows what stressful things, um, sometimes I'll notice that my jaw is like really sore after a dive, or, um, I actually get really, I get really seasick, like even swimming out from the beach, I get really nauseous. And sometimes on days when it's worse than others, I'll clench my jaw. It's definitely one of the places that I hold tension. So um, be aware if, if you're holding tension in your jaw, if you're one of those people like me, um, try to relax that during your breathe up, um, just totally relax your jaw and you can kind of mimic what that feels like. You know, if you're just sitting here and like, like clench your teeth, you can feel it all the way back. They call them, uh, I think it's like your, your mastication muscles. <laughs> Careful how you say that one. Um, but yeah, you'll feel those muscles tense and then you can actually feel them really release. So we want to be making sure that we're not clenching the entire time that we're out there, that, you know, we're not holding tension there. It will dramatically help with your equalizing. Um, also with the jaw, let's say, you know, you're on your dive and you're struggling to equalize. You're having some trouble. I want you to think about a bulldog. This was a really cool trick that I learned. Um, not self-taught. It was taught to me by like a, an equalizing, he's like an equalizing guru. Um, but he told me if you're struggling, stick your jaw out. And I envision a bulldog that has that terrible underbite. Um, try that when you equalize. And I think you'll see a drastic difference. I remember I tried it the first time and it's like, Oh my God, <laughs> my, my little tiny tubes were very happy because they, it was a really easy equalization. And I forget it all the time, um, on days when I'm a little bit stickier than others. Um, and then I'll remind myself and it's a game changer. Uh, the other thing too, you can do is actually wiggling your jaw like side to side. So if you're struggling to equalize for those of you that are watching the YouTube, you'll be able to see this, but those of you on the podcast, just envision me rocking my jaw back and forth. It's like a, a side to side thing. And that can really help, uh, get a, an equalization to go, uh, if you're struggling. Okay. So our faces are relaxed. Our head and chin is tucked. We're not crazily grabbing onto our nose. Our jaw is nice and relaxed. And if we hit a sticky point, we're going to jut it out like a bulldog or do a little wiggle side to side. So now let's talk about our shoulders. Okay. Um, what are your shoulders doing when you're in your breathe up or when you're diving, if you're wearing a wetsuit, inherently your shoulders are kind of like they're scrunched up, right? That neoprene just pinches it at the top and it pulls them up. So if you're wearing a wetsuit, you probably need to be actively like relaxing your shoulders. Um, and if you're not wearing a wetsuit, if you're just wearing a rash guard, um, you know, be thinking about where they're at. Um, I think we should learn where we each hold tension for me. I know personally it's in my jaw and it's in my core. Um, but for those of you that hold it in your shoulders, just actively tell yourself to, to let those puppies down. Um, something I used to do, um, and sometimes still do actually is I'll take my breathe up. You know, I do two normal breaths, um, before my descent, just to kind of like tell my body, okay, it's go time. And then I'll take my big inhale. I remove my snorkel. I pre-equalize at the surface. And before my duck dive, I would do a little, a little shimmy <laughs> and it wasn't, I mean, it's not like stretching anything per se, but that little shimmy of my shoulders, it kind of just was my reminder to my body of, okay, we're going to totally relax these right now. Like we're any tension that was there, we're going to shake it off. And then I would do my duck dive and something to be said about that. Um, 
you know, this, this process at the surface of doing the breathe up, doing the pre-equalization. And for those of you that are new to free diving, the pre-equalization is you're literally equalizing your ears on the surface before you dive. Uh, it's like some, some prehab, um, a lot of people rush this. I know I used to rush this a lot when I first started diving. Cause in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's precious seconds. I don't want to lose downtime in the water. I need to equalize and then dive as fast as I can. And I think we really hurt ourselves when we do that. And this was another thing that I learned, um, during some day training is, you know, yeah, you're going to spend a couple more seconds at the surface, taking your time, shaking things off, getting a nice, calm pre-equalization. Um, but you're going to see the rewards of that by having more downtime. When we rush things at the surface and we quick duck dive down, you're, you're really shorting yourself. Um, it's better to take a couple extra seconds to really get in the zone. And that relaxation is going to carry you uh, further than had you rushed that duck dive and needed to come up. Um, so definitely take your time at the surface and, and try, try a shimmy next time. Okay. So we've talked about head. We've talked about shoulders. Um, let's talk about our arms. What are your arms doing y'all when you're on a dive? Um, again, I'm not a hands-free diver. So my right hand is always on my nose. Um, I'm like a rapid fire, constant equalizer. Um, so this is always here. And this elbow on the arm that you're using to equalize, be conscious of where that guy is. <laughs> is he way out to the side? Is he, you know, giving you extra resistance? Um, you want to keep it right in line with your body. So if you're equalizing with the, you know, obviously the thumb, and the forefinger, the forearm should really just drop straight down from there. And you're not squeezing it into yourself. You're not like restricting anything here but you're just keeping it streamlined with your body, right? Cause if it's out to the side, you're it's like extra resistance. You're fighting the water more. So then what's the other arm doing? <laughs> what's this guy up to? Um, you want to be conscious of, of it and it shouldn't be out. It shouldn't be flailing. Maybe it's holding a GoPro who knows. Um, but whatever it is, keep it, keep it in line with your body. Um, it will, it will help, <laughs> help yourself have more downtime. And they're just really simple little tweaks we can make you guys. Okay. So we've talked about the top half of our body. Let's get down to the core. Um, what's going on with your core. So, uh, if you hold tension there, like I do, um, it's, it's interesting, you know, cause at the surface, you take that really big breath and you've got this really full belly and it's awkward and uncomfortable. Um, uh, I actually, as much as I want to go slow and calm at the surface, it's funny because in my mind, I really want to get down to just a little bit of depth to start to feel that air compress because it's so much more comfortable once that air, um, is compressed a little bit. I don't know if you've ever noticed when you take a really big inhale, um, if you're practicing like breath holds on land, you get a little, little lightheaded and, uh, your lungs are so full that they put a little bit of pressure on your heart. And so that's why you can feel a little lightheaded. So when you do your dive and you start to get that pressure from the water and it's decreasing your lung volume a little bit, to me, that's like golden. <laughs> it's so much more comfortable. Um, but I also have to be really aware that I hold a lot of tension there. So inherently, like I try to like kind of squeeze that air down and get rid of that uncomfortable feeling. Um, and it, it's just an awkward feeling. But, um, yeah, I just constant consciously tell myself, Hey, like loosen up in there, uh, let it go. And it does, it does help. So just some awareness of what the belly is doing. So now let's talk about the hips and not the legs as a whole guys, just what are your hips doing? <laughs> um, sometimes we'll see like, you know, those gorgeous like pictures and videos of people doing these very dramatic leg kicks and the hips are just like really going. Uh, it looks great for photos. I don't feel that it's efficient for diving. I think there's so much extra energy that is spent with those big kicks. Um, I will kick from my hips generally, but it's not a huge dramatic, uh, sway. So be conscious of what's going on there and how much action <laughs> you have going on in the hip area. 
Um, okay. So knees, what are your knees doing? Where are my bicycle peddlers at? <laughs> um, I think something that's really helpful is to get some footage of yourself doing a dive, get some footage, uh, video, ask a friend <laughs> as even if you hate being on camera for the purposes of, of learning your dive form, get someone to videotape you. And I think a lot of you um, for newer divers or maybe experienced divers, who knows? Uh, I think you'll be surprised to see just how much those knees are bending and um, how much you're kind of losing momentum. So the bicycle pedal, you don't get as far and you're using more energy. So be conscious of not to bend your knees so, so much. Um, so that those are like the what not to do is with the legs. Here's what I do. And it was another trick that I picked up during some training and I don't remember what they were called, but for lack of a better term, I'm going to call them like flutter kicks. So you're not bending your knee a whole lot. You've got like a little bit of a soft bend going on. And it's just these very quick little do, 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 uh, very quick little pedals. And it will move you so much further, so much faster, um, on way less energy. So I, I really liked that tidbit that I picked up. That's, that's just been a game changer for me, honestly. Um, I really like doing that and I'll forget sometimes I'll, I'll start catching myself, like kind of being in a rush to get somewhere, or even swimming out to the reef. Um, I swim out to the, the reef off of my beach here a lot. And as I'm swimming out, I'm like, Oh, like, I really want to get there. Like, maybe I'm going to see a, a ray today. Like I'm going to see a turtle and you're just thinking, and you're not, you know, you're not conscious of it. And then it's like, Oh man, and I'll stop. And I'll just start to do my flutter kicks. And I'm like, oh, snap, I'm actually really moving. Um, so give that a shot the next time you're in the water and, and definitely get some footage of yourself and, and check your form. Uh, it's really great. When I was, uh, it's not a diving thing, but when I was younger, I took some golf golf lessons um, from a, a LPGA lady and uh she set up a video camera and this was back in like the early early 2000s and she literally set up like a tripod with a camera behind me I'm like what's happening and she goes I'm gonna videotape you and we're gonna watch your form and it was so it was so embarrassing to see I'm like oh god that's how I stand and she would correct it and say okay see here that needs to come out more and that leg needs to go here and um, it was amazing how much it helped my golf swing to like, see where I was doing it wrong, because as you're swinging or as you're swimming, whatever you're doing, it feels right to you because it's what, you know, and people can tell you until they're blue in the face of, Hey, you got to kick this way, or you got to swing this way, or you got to like for golfing it was like, you really got to stick your butt out. Um, but until you see yourself doing it, it's hard for me at least to connect those dots of here's what I feel versus here's what I'm actually doing. Um, so getting that footage can, can be really helpful. So, all right. So that's, that's the end of the body scan of the, during the dive. So the other thing I wanted to touch on is this term. I think I said it a few minutes ago of prehab. I'm really big on prehab rather than rehab, meaning what are all of the things I can do before I dive to prevent problems, right? Prevent injury to make our dive more comfortable, right? Right. There's so much that we can do on land before we even get to the water um, that contributes to a healthy and happy dive. Um, so it, it depends on what your struggles are specifically, but um, as a general statement, I think everybody can benefit from stretching and not just like, you know, normal muscle, leg, arm stretching. That's very helpful. Doing a yoga flow, that's all great, but diaphragm stretching. And if you're not familiar with what diaphragm stretching is, do some YouTubing, <laughs> go down some rabbit holes. Um, it's honestly, it feels so awful <laughs> the first couple times you do it. And then it feels so great as you continue. Um, I think you'll be humbled if you haven't done them before. You'll be humbled as to how uncomfortable it is the first couple of rounds. But if you do it for a week, you know, a little bit every day and no joke, it takes like five to 10 minutes a day. It's nothing. It's like, you could do it. I actually, I make my coffee and then, um, I'll, I'll actually do my stretching and I get done before my coffee has cooled off. <laughs> and then I drink, I reward myself with my coffee. Um, it, it takes no time at all. You guys. And it, 
makes such a difference in your dive. You will have, you'll be more comfortable at depth. First of all, way more comfortable at depth because you're mimicking this very, very small lung volume. Um, but, uh, I do the full diaphragm stretches as well as empty and it like loosens up everything in the intercostals. It even helps like kind of opening up, um, like a heart opener, um, for those of you that hold tension here in your chest, um, it is, it's really great. So go down some YouTube, uh, trails and, and look up how to do diaphragm stretching. Um, maybe in a different episode, I could even like walk you guys through how to do one. Um, there's, there's a couple different postures that I am just a super big fan of. So diaphragm stretching is one doing obviously general stretching yoga. That's all great. Um, but let's talk about like diet. Um, before a dive, I, I avoid dairy because it can make you mucusy and it can make things sticky. Um, as we go through this podcast journey, by the way, I'm, I will share like a bunch of my own stories. Um, <laughs> lucky you, but, uh, you'll notice that a common theme for me has been equalization. It's just, it's been such a, an interesting journey for me, the equalizing stuff. So, um, I, I really do try to be very healthy in terms of everything I can do to make that a little bit easier for me. So I avoid dairy, uh, even the day before, um, because it just clears everything up or avoids mucusy buildup and hydration is so key. Like how much water are you drinking? Not just right before you jump in the water. How much water are you drinking the day before your dive? Um, how much water are you drinking the morning of that stuff again, makes a huge difference. Um, and then also, you know, I'm not big on like the drugs. Um, some people really like to incorporate like Sudafed into their prehab. Um, Sudafed makes me like antsy. I don't know if anyone's ever had that. If I take Sudafed, I get kind of like, ah, like, I feel like I've had a shot of espresso. So I don't love the feeling, but, um, I will say that if I'm a little bit stuffy, um, I, I will take some the night before. And then I'll take some the morning of, as well as ibuprofen. Um, ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory. And with your eustachian tubes, if you're going to be diving for multiple days in a row, maybe you're going to a retreat or you're doing um, some back-to-back -back training, um, or you're just going to be on a trip where you're going to be diving in like the reefs a lot. It's a good idea to be preventative and take some ibuprofen beforehand um, so that you can try to reduce the irritation that's going to roar up because <laughs> your eustachian tubes get angry. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Like if you've done a couple days of diving in a row, even if you haven't been like sticky or having any problems, your tubes just get like sore. Uh, and it's because if you've had like a dry period and then you go into a bunch of days of diving, they get inflamed. Um, it's actually the muscle around the eustachian tube. Uh, I think that can swell up. So you'll feel like that tenderness, that soreness kind of behind your ear and down your neck. And um, so yeah, ibuprofen ahead of time as a prehab rather than after the fact as a rehab, okay? So stretching, diaphragm and body, lots and lots of water, avoiding dairy, maybe some Sudafed if you're feeling sticky and then ibuprofen. Again, I'm not big on taking the medications. Um, there's Afrin too. Uh, oxymetazoline is the active ingredient there, I believe. And that's the nose spray that like opens up everything. And you're like, Oh my God, I can breathe <laughs> like better than I've ever been able to breathe before. Um, it's great stuff works. Awesome. It is a steroid. It is bad to use for extended lengths of time. It can actually make you regress and make your, um, like your passageways, uh, more irritated than when you first started using it. So I would advise that as like a last case scenario. Again, you've got like a book, uh, a trip booked and you're going to go somewhere and you're going to go do all this diving and like, oh crap, I'm, I have allergies or I'm getting a cold. Um, in that case, yeah, I, I use it because <laughs> it's just, it is a game changer, but I limit it to like one or two days and that's it. Um, so be careful with that stuff. Um, also if you, if you guys have questions about, um, the equalizing stuff and, and remediations for that, get with an ENT. Uh, there are ENTs everywhere, some better than others. And if you can find some that specialize like with divers, um, through Dan, actually, uh, if you're not a member of Dan, you could look that up. 
Um, but Dan, I think could refer some, some ENTs in your area. So yeah, get in touch if you're struggling, cause I'm not a medical professional, not even a, a free dive instructor. So just, just Jody Schmo over here. <laughs> okay. So body scan prehab over rehab. Um, the last thing, this is not necessarily like a, a tip or a tidbit. It's more just like a general frame of mind that I really would like for divers to absorb. And it's something that I struggled with. So I, I would like to just say that wherever you are in your journey, just to be patient with yourself. Um, I think social media has made it really easy these days to like, look at other divers and be like, ah, oh, if I'm not like them, I'm not doing good. Or, you know, who knows? maybe, maybe you don't care, but if you're someone who plays that comparison game, um, it can be really difficult to be patient with yourself and your journey because every body is different and everybody's training is different. And, you know, I, I guess just, I'm saying don't rush the process, right? We've got the rest of our lives to dive. Okay. The water, even though it might be in some questionable states at the moment, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. You will have time to continue this beautiful journey of free diving. So, you know, if you're struggling in certain areas or you're not able to get out in the water as much as you want, just be patient with the whole thing. Don't rush it. Um, I think we, we really do hurt ourselves literally and figuratively when we try to rush the process and we try to learn all the things at once and perfect everything. And I think baby steps is key master, you know, mastering the first like 10 meters, I think. And I spoke about this on a previous podcast, um, mastering those first 10 meters will do you so much better than trying to get to depth right when you start diving. Um, if you try to strive for depth right off the bat, I, I feel that bad habits are picked up and you miss some really basic essentials that will help you when you get deeper. Um, so just getting to that plate, like chasing that number, you know, checking the dive watch every time, like, Oh, how deep did I go? I think it really hurts us. So yeah, be patient with your journey. Um, so then the last thing I want to talk about is just some, some safety stuff. Um, so a lot of people dive and they're, you know, they haven't been through a course. They don't know about, um, blackouts and LMCs and stuff. So if you are someone who loves to dive, but you don't have formal training, you're not super aware of things like that, please do some research. Um, you know, just some really basic things to understand is please don't do like hyperventilated diet or hyperventilated breathing, uh, before a dive. Um, it will give you a false sense of how much air you have, and you will be much more likely, uh, to have issues. Um, a great example of this is, uh, oh God, I hope he never hears this. Um, I don't know who he is by the way. Actually, I hope he does hear this. <laughs> <laughs> whoever you are, the young man that was at the Springs, uh, it was Jenny Springs in the main spring. Uh, I think it was two years ago and he was with his buddy and they each had a dive watch on and they were trying to dive back into the cave as far as they could go, like to get by the little reaper sign of like, don't come back here. You'll die. There, there's like a very big warning sign. And they were like so hyped and they were taking such big breaths and like really breathing very quickly in between each of their dives. And they just kept, it was one after the other one would go come up like, Oh, how did I do? And then the other one bomb and go right back. And I watched them and I was like, Oh, something's, something's going down here. This is going to be bad. These guys have no idea what they're doing. And, um, so one of them goes and comes up to the surface and literally loses control of his body. Like surprise, surprise. Um, he has an LMC and just starts shaking and like kind of going underwater. And, um, my partner was the closest one to him. So went and grabbed him and, um, there's safety protocol that you follow by the way, um, for what to do when somebody has an LMC or a blackout. Um, also it's all over YouTube. So watch those videos. Um, so you can be aware. But like the, so the main rule with that, I think is you're done for the day. Like if, if that happens to you, you're done, you need to get out of the water and you need to not come back until tomorrow. Um, cause once you have one, you're really likely to, you're more likely to have another. 
And um, the buddy he was with, you know, had no idea what was going on. I don't even think he was even uh, in eyesight. Uh, he might have already been on his next dive. So we tried explaining to him, you know, what had happened. And, and he was like, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just going to take a little break. And I told him, like, you should really, you know, you should try to be done for the day. Like, you got tomorrow. And he got out of the water. And we actually packed up um, to go home. And and as we're driving out, what do we see? And we see see this guy walking right back into the spring with his fins and everything. He was going back for another dive. And bless his heart. I hope he's okay. Um, but yeah. All of that to say, if you're, if you're not aware, you know, of why we have LMCs and blackouts, um, do some research, uh, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to the people that you're diving with. Um, it's a, it's a good idea to be aware of those things and what to do, you know, if they happen and the main one, just get out of the water, <laughs> just be done. Oh boy. So aside from that, I, I think that's probably enough for today, right? That was a, a whole laundry list of things to remember. Um, but it's honestly, you guys, it's my absolute pleasure to share what I know and I don't know it all. I've still got a lot to learn and I'm, I'm learning every time I dive and every person that I train with, and I'm always picking up great, great tips. And, um, I wish that someone would have sat me down, you know, outside of my course, because it's so much to absorb. Um, I, I think I would have loved to like have a powwow of like, Hey, what are, what are all the tricks that you've learned in your experience? Um, and I think obviously instructors do try to give us this. It's just a lot. Um, uh, I truly hope that you guys can find some value here or that some of these tricks will help you, um, feel free you guys to reach out, put stuff in the comments. If you have questions again, not a medical professional, I'm not a free dive instructor. I'm just a girl who is obsessed with the water and obsessed with diving and constantly trying to pick up, um, more knowledge. And as I gain it, I love to share it. So that's what I'm doing. But if this resonated with you, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please, please, uh, if you're on the, the podcast, please follow the podcast, Re leave a review. It really, really helps uh, this podcast to gain some traction. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, if you can like, if you could subscribe uh, and any questions you guys drop them in the comments, I will promise to get back to all of you. And uh, I really look forward to sharing more uh, about my personal journey and about, you know, some, some tips and tricks that help us all along the way. So thanks so much for tuning in and uh, have fun. <laughs>